Okay, so John, I see Rocco, Bill Brock, Don, and Dan on the line so far for crib missioners. That's correct. And Rick, I just joined. And Rick, great. Good morning, um, Commissioner Charlesworth. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Great, you're loud and clear. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioner Gibney. Can you hear us okay? Commissioner Gibney, uh, you're on mute right now. I don't know if you can hear us. Commissioner Gibney. Can you hear us, sir? All right, we'll come back. Uh, Eric, can you hear us? I'm here. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. We can hear you too. Uh, let's try with Commissioner. Good morning, Commissioner Gibney. Good morning. Can you hear us, sir? I can now. Yep. I've, okay. I've we can... Had to make some adjustments. Okay, but... perfect. Okay. You're coming through loud and clear. Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, it doesn't look like Richard is in yet. I'll text him just to confirm he's not having trouble. Okay, thanks, Tim. Good morning, this is Wayne, just testing my microphone. Loud and clear, Wayne.
Hey, John, this is Eric. Are you there? Yes, Eric. John? Hey, you're controlling the mute button, correct? More uh, or less Chad's on the screen. Doing, Chad's, Chad's doing, doing that. that? Okay. Got it. Thanks. Uh huh. Richard just and, told me. Richard just told me he's dialing in. Okay. Thanks, Tim. And Eric, you're familiar with how to unmute yourself, correct? Yeah, I got it here. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, Chad, R L Richard is the last one we're waiting on, correct? That's correct, John. Okay, so once he gets in and we check his mic, you and D can start the live stream, but let's check the mic and then we'll mute everyone whenever we start the streaming, okay? Yes, John. Thank you. And then, Tim, whenever you're ready to start the meeting at 10, you'll just unmute and commence the meeting. You got it. Thank you. Good morning, Richard. Can you hear us okay? Uh, just one second. Okay, this is Richard. I'm on. Okay, Richard, we can hear you loud and clear. We're going to go ahead and mute everybody. We're going to start the recording in the live stream, and then Tim will kick us off at 10. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, our hour of 10 o'clock having arrived, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 138th annual, or 138th an meeting, not annual meeting, 38th meeting of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. This meeting is being broadcasted on Facebook Live in real time. A recording of the meeting will be immediately available on the PFBC Facebook page after the meeting ends, and a recording will also be posted to the Commission's YouTube page within a few days. Um, if you were with us for our last virtual meeting that we had in April, now we're going to follow a similar format. Uh, again, my name is Tim Schaefer. I'm the Executive Director of the agency. Wayne Melnick is our Chief Counsel, and Wayne will be serving as our MC today and walking us through the items in the agenda. And with that, I'll turn it over to Wayne. Good morning. Welcome, commissioners, staff, and members of the public viewing this meeting through our live stream. This is the 138th meeting of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission being held on July 20th, 2020. It will be immediately apparent that this is not our usual format for our quarterly meetings. The circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 crisis has made it unsafe and impractical to hold our normal public meeting. Nonetheless, recognizing the need to comply with Pennsylvania's Sunshine Act, open meetings law, the commissioners are meeting in this virtual format with a live stream broadcast to the public. The meeting will follow the published agenda as, it, as is customary for our formal meetings. That agenda was made available to the public through the Fish and Boat Commission website. The agenda items will be summarized on screen for those following along with our live streams. 
I will note that there's a, there was a slight change to the text of one item found on page 12 of the agenda. This slight change the language of the proposed rulemaking regarding stocking of Class A wild trout streams was posted to the Fish and Boat website on Friday, and the website agenda is up to date for those following along. Differences you will notice in this virtual meeting include the elimination of the board's committee meetings. Presentations that would normally have been made to committees of the board will instead be made to the board as a whole, and those presentations will be part of this live stream. Another difference is that the board president has delegated to me certain procedural matters in order to better facilitate the broadcast of this meeting. And one final item, we plan to take an hour break at or near the top of each hour. Those breaks will be announced and will be five minutes long, during which time microphones will be muted. With those introductory remarks concluded, I now call the 138th meeting of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission to order. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Only my microphone is live at this time, but I invite all to participate in the pledge along with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioners, I will now call the roll. Commissioner Ally. Present. Commissioner Anderson. Present. Commissioner Brock. Present. Commissioner Charlesworth. Present. Commissioner Gibney. Present. Commissioner Kaufman. Present. Commissioner Pastori. Present. Commissioner Small. Vice President Lewis. Present. President Hassar. Present. President Hassar, we have a quorum. Commissioners, the first item for your consideration is the review and approval of the minutes from the April 27, 2020 quarterly meeting. <laughs> These minutes have been previously forwarded to you for review. Before I call for a motion, I want to remind commissioners to please identify themselves whenever speaking for the benefit of our audience. Commissioners, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? This is Eric Hussar. I make a motion to approve the April 2020 minutes. This is Commissioner Richard Lewis. I second the motion. Hearing a motion in the second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call the vote. All in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed? The minutes are approved. The next item on our agenda is the election of officers. Uh, commissioners, do we have a motion on a slate of officers? This is Commissioner Brock. I would like to nominate Richard Lewis to serve as president and Rick Kaufman to serve as vice president. This is Rocco Ally. I would second Mr. Brock's motion. Are there any other nominations at this time?
Hearing no other nominations, I will proceed to a vote on the slate proposed as President uh, Commissioner Lewis, as Vice President Commissioner Kaufman. All those in favor of this slate of candidates, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed? Commissioner Lewis and Commissioner Kaufman are elected as president and vice president of the board, respectively. It is customary for the new president to uh, make some remarks at this time. Thanks, Wayne. <clears throat> this is Commissioner Lewis. Eric, I just want to let you know that we all feel you've provided some outstanding commission leadership over your past two years. Um, dur during this two year term that you've had, we've really made some pretty good progress in, on, on some things. We've moved forward the, with the development and approval of a three year strategic plan. We've achieved some historic legislation authorizing the commission to establish its own license and permit fees, and the fees that will be necessary for our long term sustainability. And we've, the commission has also completed the training and graduation of 19 waterways conservation officers who are already hard at work serving our anglers and boaters during this busy summer on the water. Commissioners would like you to have this frame print in appreciation of your outstanding work. It is a signed and numbered limited edition watercolor of a leaping brook trout that was painted by a Pennsylvania born friend of mine, Kathy Brown, who I helped learn to fly fish. Kathy painted this brook trout watercolor for her son's birthday when she was diagnosed with multiple myeloma cancer. I asked if she would allow me to print 20 copies of this original watercolor to use at conservation organization fundraising auctions and also to award deserving conservationists and sportsmen and sportswomen. She agreed and she signed and numbered the 50 prints. If Kathy was alive today, I know she would be very happy to learn that you've been awarded her print for your leadership in the management and protection of Pennsylvania's fish, aquatic, and reptilian resources. Again, from every one of the commissioners, thank you for your effort and your time and your passion over the last two years. Thanks, thanks, Richard and commissioners. Thank you. Um, to my fellow commissioners, um, I offer many thanks for the trust you've placed in me. As we move forward over the next year, I'm looking forward to seeing the Bureau of Voting established and staffed. I'm looking forward to implementing our some, the, the first year of our new strategic plan goals and projects, and also to sustaining the increased interest and participation in fishing and boating across Pennsylvania we saw that was evidenced with our 18% 18, 18 increase in license sales this year, but also looking forward to reserving our diverse angler population to determine their wants and needs more exactly so we can well serve them. I don't come into this office with a big wish list of personal agenda items to achieve, but rather I have a strong desire to use all of our Commonwealth's bountiful water aquatic and fishery resources to serve the needs of all of our anglers and boaters and a big a big caveat while protecting the health and safety of the commission's employees partners volunteers and customers during this not very nice covid 19 epidemic i want to also say that i'm extremely grateful to the commission's staff for their diligent work and personal commitment you put forth over the past three or four months to continue all the commission's programs and activities through the coronavirus epidemic. My hat is off to each and all of you. <clears throat> I caught my first brook trout when I was four, year, four years old in a three foot wide meadow in a brook on a Catskill Mountain farm. I'm a non-selective angler. By that, I mean I enjoy catching fish with flies, 
lures or bait. I enjoy releasing fish for another angler to catch. And I enjoy keeping fish for grilling or to smoke. I remain just as excited about fishing now as when I first my, caught my first small brook trout in that Catskill Mountain Meadow when I was four years old. Thank you for the honor of electing me your president. I will now turn things over to the executive director for his report. Uh, to Richard for those comments. Um, also want to echo the thanks for Eric. Um, it's been a heck of a time together um, since uh, since I've moved into this role. Um, really an unprecedented uh, year and a half. So thank you, Eric, for, for your, le your leadership and everything, most notably the uh, strategic plan that we have to, now to guide us for the next three years. And, and Richard, um, really look forward to working with you. Uh, I want to kick off by just thanking the Fish and Boat Commission staff for their continued work um, at ad adherence to uh, social distancing, masking, teleworking protocols. Um, it's really uh, remarkable the amount that we've been able to continue to accomplish uh, despite the circumstances. So thanks to everyone from the, the folks that are working from their homes, people that need to be in the office because of the function of their duty, uh, biologists and engineers and maintenance crews that are in the field, uh, WCOs that are patrolling the water, really everybody, thank you for what you're doing um, to, to keep continuing to implement our mission during these times. Um, in particular, I uh, want to welcome our 19 new waterways conservation officers who uh, went into their districts uh, just a few weeks ago. I would encourage listeners on the call, uh, members of the public, if you see a new waterways conservation officer on the water in your district, please, um, from a safe distance, uh, come introduce yourselves. They are here to work for and with you, so uh, please don't be shy. Uh, please introduce yourself uh, when you see our new officers in the field, and we're delighted to have them. I also really want to <clears throat> thank and welcome all of the new anglers and boaters that we have in Pennsylvania this year. Um, as of right now, as, as Richard mentioned, uh, licensed anglers are up about 18% in Pennsylvania um, over last year. Uh, really interestingly, our resident annual licenses are up over 22, nearly 23 percent. So people really are turning to the outdoors, uh, notably fishing and boating uh, during this, this unprecedented summer. Our launch permits are up by about 50 percent. Uh, it's tough to even find a kayak some of the places that you go to buy them. So welcome to everyone who may be new to the sport and new to our activities. I uh, remind you that our website, fishandboat.com, is a really great resource, and also encourage you to download our app, Fish Boat PA, uh, for lots of really, really great resources and um, information on where you can fish and boat close to home. Uh, would like to thank the General Assembly uh, for the uh, really remarkable session, legislative session, uh, that we're having here in 2020. Um, earlier this summer, uh, three significant pieces of legislation were passed. Uh, House Bill 808 is now Act 56. Uh, that was from Representative Tom Mahaffey that grants the authority to the Fish and Boat Commission to establish uh, the fees uh, for licenses and permits. Also expands the use of the Lake Erie permit funds uh, for anything fishing related. So thank you to Representative Mahaffey for his leadership on the bill. Uh, to Senator Eichelberger, who is uh, no longer a state senator, but who got the ball rolling a number of years ago with this legislation. Uh, senator Pat Stefano offered an amendment um, uh, late in the process that helped to get it over the hump. We had wonderful support from the current and past chairs of the Game and Fisheries Committee, Representatives Gillespie and Court, and Courts in the House, and Senators Laughlin and Brewster um, in the Senate. House and Senate leadership uh, in both chambers throughout the process has been wonderfully supportive. So thank you uh, to the full leadership teams of both chambers as well as legislative staff, uh, to Governor Wolf for his support, and also for the conservation and sportsmen's groups and partners and supporters who have been with us uh, throughout this multi-year process. So thank you. Uh, we'll be diligent and uh, responsible and respectful uh, with the authority that's been delegated to us.
Uh, other two bills of note, I want to thank Representative Gillespie, Gillespie for introducing House Bill 1003, which is now Act 39, which improves our waterways conservation officer's ability to enforce the marking of low-head dam hazards. Um, that's particularly important as we see record numbers of people out and unpowered boats in kayaks on our, on our, on our rivers, creeks, and streams. So uh, thank you for that bill to Representative Gillespie. And then we had a comprehensive boater safety and customer service bill um, that, among other things, also actually makes it, uh, finally was the last step to allow us for, allow anglers to purchase their license on their cell phones, a real great matter of convenience. Uh, thank you to Representative Menser and Benninghoff for their leadership on House Bill 1185, which is now Act 40 of 2020. Uh, finally, uh, the last thing I'll say, and frankly, the only thing that I hope you remember from my remarks is wear your life jacket, please. Everyone who's listening, uh, again, we're just seeing unbelievable uh, numbers of people out enjoying Pennsylvania's waterways, some for the first time, uh, some for the first time in a long time. Um, please wear your life jacket. We've had uh, some fatalities already on the water this year. Each one of them was not wearing their life jacket. So um, you never know what's going to happen on the water. Uh, be mindful of unpredictable summer storms that we have. Please do not drink and boat. Uh, but most importantly, please wear your life jacket when you're on the water. Have a good time this summer. That concludes my report. Thank you. An executive session was held earlier this morning, Monday, July 20th, 2020, at approximately 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, items discussed were personnel matters, potential real estate acquisitions, and pending litigation. The Commission voted on one item by notational vote since the April 2020 meeting. This item was the approval of the reorganization of administrative units within the commission. An agency may utilize notational voting to expedite decision making or to remove uncontested or un non-controversial matters from the agenda of public meetings in order to facilitate public deliberations. In this case, the notational vote was prompted by consideration of the COVID-19 effect on public meetings. The voting was conducted via email between June 17th and June 22nd, 2020. There was no discussion of this item in the emails. The uh, reorganization was approved unanimously in a 10-0 vote. COVID-19 considerations also caused adjustment to the way public comments are being handled at this meeting. Ordinarily, the board would open the floor to members of the public who wish to appear before the board. Since it has not been possible to have the public physically appear before the board and limitations of conferencing software made live commenting uh, impractical, the public was invited to submit comments via telephone. These messages were recorded, uploaded, and made available for the commissioners to review. We received comments from three individuals. Some of these recordings contain personally identifiable information regarding the individuals that we do not wish to make part of the permanent recording of this meeting, so I will summarize those comments now. John Klein from, John, from Klein Associates in Harrisburg, PA, provided support on behalf of the Wildlife for Everyone Foundation for the commission's proposed rulemaking to add a section of Bald Eagle Creek as a catch and release all tackle regulation. Philip Light from Bedford, PA, has concerns regarding the commission's proposed changes to section 57.8A of the, reg the commission's regulations for stocking class A trout streams. Specifically, Mr. Light believes the new process streamlines and makes it easier to stock Class A waters and advocates instead that it should be more difficult to stock these particular waters. Matthew White from Greentown, Pennsylvania comments that he believes Lake Wampawpack is the worst lake he has fished and believes something should be done with it, believes there is no law enforcement patrol on the lake, 
too much boating traffic, and the lake should not be open to the public and is generally disappointed. That concludes the public comments. Next slide, please. We will now proceed to the voting and discussion item portion of the agenda. Of the agenda. Uh, you will see a list of the items that will be covered on your screen. These include a property acquisition in Butler Township, Adams County, discussion of a uh, commission strategic plan for July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2023, a briefing on Operation Dry Water 2020, proposed rulemakings relating to boating in Berks and Mercer County, discussion of the strategic plan for management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania for 2020 through 2024, Next slide. Proposed rulemakings uh, for several fisheries, including um, Bald Eagle Creek, Center County, uh, Whipple Lake in Huntington County, Possum Lake, Cumberland County, Lake Perez, Huntington County, and also an amendment to Section 57.A relating to Class A wild trout streams. And finally, uh, in the fisheries, Proposed changes to the list of Class A wild trout streams and the classification of uh, wild trout streams. Next slide, please. We will now proceed to the voting and discussion item portion. The first item for consideration is a property acquisition in Butler Township, Adams County. Good morning, Commissioners. Now Foods owns a 58-acre property located in Butler Township, Adams County. It is located along Conewago Creek and Russell Tav along Russell Tavern Road and Ziegler Mill Road. It contains a portion of Conewago Creek that is designated as a catch and release, fly fishing only section that provides significant trout fishing opportunities. This section of Conewago Creek is stocked by the commission, the McSherry's Town and Nouse Foods Cooperative Fish Hatcheries and the Mummasburg Sportsman's Club. The fly fishing section has been managed and maintained by the Adams County Trout Unlimited Chapter and the Northern Virginia Trout Unlimited Chapter for over 30 years. Recently, Nouse Foods expressed an interest in selling the property. The Adams County Trout Unlimited Chapter and the Northern Virginia Trout Unlimited Chapter and other local interests are concerned about the future of public fishing access if the property is sold. They have partnered with the Land Conservancy of Adams County to discuss the idea of acquiring the property from Mouse Foods. Next slide, please. The Conservancy plans to purchase the property and transfer ownership to the Commission. The total cost of the acquisition is $441,156. This includes the appraised value of $406,000 plus acquisition costs. The Conservancy has entered into an option agreement with the seller for $406,000. Conservancy applied to DCNR for half of the appraised value of the property and half of the acquisition costs. Uh, the amount is $220,578. Uh, dollars, excuse me. The Conservancy will provide $120,578 towards the acquisition. Adams County Trout Unlimited will provide $16,000 and the Conservancy has requested a grant in the amount of $84,000 from the Commission to complete the acquisition. Once the Conservancy acquires the property, it will convey fee title to the property to the Commission. Commission's acceptance of the conveyance will be contingent upon receiving good and marketable title to the property and an acceptable environmental site assessment. The deed of conveyance will contain DCNR standard language regarding the transfer of property purchased with DCNR funds, which basically states that no change in use, ownership, control, or interest in the property may occur and no encumbrance may be placed on the property without DCNR's consent. 
The, the Pennsylvania Fishing and Boating Access Strategy indicates a need for more access along this section of Conewago Creek. The Commission's regional law enforcement and fishery staff have recommended that the site be acquired. Next slide, please. Staff recommend that the Commission authorize a grant not to exceed $84,000 to the Land Conservancy of Adams County for the acquisition of 58 acres along Conewago Creek in Butler Township, Adams County, and the subsequent transfer of the property to the commission. Thank you. That presentation was made by Scott Bollinger, the commission's statewide public access program manager. Uh, I want to remind uh, presenters and uh, also commissioners, anyone speaking, to please identify yourselves whenever speaking for the benefit of our audience. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion for this item? Hi, uh, this is Commissioner Lewis. I, mo I move that we accept the staff's recommendation. Commissioner Charles Worth, I second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide. The next item for consideration is the Commission's strategic plan for July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. This will be presented by Mike Narazzi. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this is Mike Narazzi, uh, Director of Policy and Planning. We are pleased to present today for your consideration the Commission's strategic plan for July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023. I'll begin my presentation by providing a brief overview of the strategic planning process. The plan's development began in April 2019 and continued until June of this year. It was a methodical, deliberate process designed to incorporate feedback from diverse stakeholders and engage every level and functional area of the agency. On this slide, you'll see the various ways that we solicited input and feedback for the plan. We started by conducting online surveys of commissioners, staff, stakeholders, including the BAB, and the public. The input from these surveys was quite valuable and served as a great starting point for policy and planning staff. From May 9, 2019 to January 2020, working groups consisting of PFBC staff, commissioners, and BAB members participated in eight facilitated strategic planning sessions to begin forming the foundation of the plan. Numerous additional focus sessions were held with PFBC staff to dive deeper into the more complex issues. Additionally, staff kept commissioners updated during the plan's development and briefed the commission's voting advisory board. We originally intended to bring the draft final plan to the commissioners during their spring meeting in April, but ultimately decided to give staff some additional time to reevaluate the plan in light of the challenges presented to our agency's operations by the COVID-19 pandemic. Finally, Liz Weber, CEO of Weber Business Services, was the consultant on this project and this is the second plan she has assisted with over the last several years. She is currently assisting the Game Commission with their strategic plan and has also assisted numerous other state agencies in their planning efforts. Next slide.
Next slide. Can you return to slide 10, please? Okay, so this slide provides a, an overview of the strategic plan. So the plan will guide the PFBC's efforts from July 1st, 2020 until June 30th, 2023. These dates align with the Commonwealth's fiscal year in order to ensure that our plan is aligned with annual budgets and spending plans. The plan uses a SMART goal format, which you can see means specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-bound. And there are a total of 183 goals and sub-goals included in the plan. Next slide, please. So how is this plan different from previous strategic plans? Natural resource management is a dynamic activity that needs to swiftly respond to the evolving needs of anglers, boaters, and aquatic resources. Traditionally, the Commission has operated off a five-year strategic plan, the last one being approved in July 2014 and expiring in 2017. The decision was made early on to shorten the planning cycle to three years so we could be more flexible and responsive as an agency. We also developed, with Liz's guidance, a more robust implementation tracking system that we believe will be more effective and user-friendly than the existing quarterly report format. Next slide. One of the first tasks at hand during this planning process was to create a new vision statement for the agency to succinctly convey the direction we would like to go as an agency. It really was focused on two distinct themes. First, acknowledging not just the quality, but also the, the diversity of fishing and boating opportunities available in the Commonwealth. Second, that the PFBC has long been recognized as the national leader in aquatic resource management and seeks to maintain that status into the future. Finally, you'll see a tagline, we have something for everyone, that was offered by Executive Director Schaefer during these discussions. This tagline really reson resonated with the work group, so we decided to include it in the plan. Whether you enjoy pursuing wild brook trout on a small mountain stream, chasing giant muskies in our lakes, or paddling your kayak on our rivers, we've got you covered. The mission remains the same. The work group strongly felt the Commission's existing mission is still comprehensive and relevant to our work. And finally, the values for the new strategic plan are consistent with those included in the strategic plan of our national organization, the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. Every employee is expected to uphold these values during their work with the agency. Next slide. The next task for the work group was developing what are, no, developing what are known as guiding principles, which were not distinguished from our values in the old strategic plan. Guiding principles are reoccurring themes that kept coming to the forefront of the work group conversations across all topics and agency disciplines. We want our employees to keep these guiding principles in mind as they make decisions on behalf of the agency. The first four guiding principles are commission culture, safety, asset stewardship, and resource first. Next slide. Here are the remaining four guiding principles, access, R3, resilience, and relevance. Next slide, please. Next, I'll walk the board through our six strategic priorities, along with an example of the corresponding goal for each priority. These were developed by the work group due to their agency-wide significance and provided the framework or buckets in which goals were to be arrayed. As previously mentioned, there are 183 goals and sub-goals, so in the interest of time, Commissioners, staff, and the public can view the entirety of our plan on our website shortly after the plan receives final board approval. The first strategic priority is sport fish management. This includes categories such as fishing access, fish culture, and fisheries management, and is geared towards the long-term sustainability of our sport fisheries, ensuring the public has abundant access to them. An example of a goal under sport fish management is, by June 30th, 2023, achieve no net loss of public fishing access. This goal includes an update to Pennsylvania's fishing and boating access strategy document, 
working with partners to open access to fishing opportunities at rural ponds and urban water bodies, and actively promoting access to lakes owned by water companies. The second strategic priority is non-game species, aquatic resources, and habitat conservation. This priority is intended to make sure healthy ecosystems are available for all species managed by the PFBC, not just those commonly sought by anglers. These include all aquatic resources, non-game species, and their habitat. An example of a goal is by June 30th, 2023, complete or develop 13 non-game species action plans. This includes updating seven existing species action plans, including the bog turtle, eastern massasauga, timber rattlesnake, eastern spadefoot, eastern pearl shell, Chesapeake log perch, and salamander mussel, and developing six species action plans for endangered and threatened species, including the eastern mud turtle, northern red-bellied cooter, pistol grip, round hickory nut, long-nosed sucker, and inland burbot populations. The third strategic priority is recreational boating. The agency would like to elevate the profile of our Commonwealth's recreational boating opportunities, both powered and non-powered, as well as boating safety. This priority also addresses the PFBC's nationally recognized water rescue programs. An example of a goal is that by June 30th, 2022, improve non-powered boating education and communication to improve safety awareness and reduce the annual fatality rate to include developing and implementing a non-powered boat safety education and outreach initiative, online materials for non-powered boaters, and safety information for retailers of non-powered watercraft. Next slide. The fourth strategic priority is employee investments in agency operations. The work group recognized that the agency's employees are its greatest asset. Leadership within the agency needs to be providing communication, training, and development to our workforce and preparing them for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Additionally, the PFBC will have a renewed focus on diversity and inclusion, promoting employment opportunities to underrepresented communities, and providing a welcoming environment for all of our employees. An example of the goal is that by December 31st, 2020, the PFBC will develop an experiential learning program to allow staff to spend at least one day per year assisting with an activity conducted by a different bureau within the PFBC to build camaraderie, learn about other functional areas, and encourage collaboration across bureaus. The fifth priority is communications and marketing. The world of fish and wildlife management has become very familiar with the concept of R3, recruiting, retaining, and reactivating our anglers, boaters, and conservationists. The agency will embark on an aggressive R3 strategy over the next three years to usher in a new generation of supporters and in turn, help provide the commission with the revenue we need to continue to meet their expectations. An example of a goal in this priority is that by June 30th, 2023, we will develop and provide alternate, alternative learning opportunities online to increase knowledge and skills for fishing and boating. For example, internet tools, instructional and experience-based videos, as well as an educational series. The final strategic priority is infrastructure and equipment. This priority emphasizes the need to address facility improvements, agency equipment needs, IT capabilities, and the involving needs of our customers and aquatic resources. An example of a goal for this priority is that by March 31st, 2021, replace the current online licensing system with a new user-friendly Pennsylvania Automated Licensing System, otherwise known as PALS 2.0, to improve customer service by streamlining the license application and purchase process and facilitating auditing and reporting for licensing agents. Next slide. The next steps will be that the plan for the strategic plan will be that the plan will be shared with all PFBC employees in the public. The Office of Policy and Planning will be responsible for monitoring its progress. The new quarterly tracker will be, much like with uh, previous strategic plans, will be publicly accessible on our website. And the goal is to have committee meetings centered at the Board of Commissioners centered around the plan's goals. The next strategic planning cycle will, begin, will be actually beginning in April of 2022. Next slide. Before we move on to questions, I'd like to briefly thank everyone from across the agency that participated in the development of the plan, especially those who served on the work groups, including Commissioners Brock, Bassar, Kaufman, and Lewis, 
Also, a special thanks to Sean Gimble, our Strategic Initiatives Coordinator, who handles a lot of the behind the scenes work, and Liz Weber for her direction and guidance. We think there'll be a lot of exciting things to come in the next three years. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have at this time. If there are no questions, uh, I'll move ahead with the staff recommendation. Uh, staff recommend that the commission adopt the new strategic plan. If approved, the strategic plan will retroactively take effect on July 1st, 2020 and guide the agency's efforts until June 30th, 2023. This is Eric Hussar. I'll make that motion to approve the plan. <clears throat> Commissioner Brock, I'll second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion of this item? Uh, hearing none, I will call for a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth? Yes. Commissioner Gibney? Yes. Commissioner Hassar? Yes. Commissioner Pastore? Yes. Commissioner Small. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next item for consideration is a, a presentation by Colonel Corey Britcher. Uh, good morning, commissioners. As uh, Chief Melnick just indicated, I'm uh, Colonel Corey Britcher, Director of Bureau of Law Enforcement. I have a discussion item today on Operation Dry Water 2020. For those of you who've been around, you, you know that Operation Dry Water is a national boating safety um, detail that is um, takes place in all 50 states in the six territories under the guidance of NASBLA, which is the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators. Uh, this year, the operation took place on July 3rd through the 5th. And here in Pennsylvania, we had 148 officers from around the Commonwealth to include our own WCOs and deputy WCOs, as well as officers from the Game Commission, the State Police, uh, DCNR, the Army Corps of Engineers, several sheriff's office, and uh, local police departments and, and one state constable. I would, indicate, would like to point out that this is up 11 officers from last year. So we had more help this year than last and, and it truly showed as I show some statistics here to you. Next slide, please. Uh, during that weekend in July, we contacted 2,490 boats during the operation. This is actually up about a thousand boats compared to last year and is a significant uh, increase to what we were doing. Um, during those interactions, you can see that we issued 298 citations and 1,224 warnings. I would point out to you that we're still at our um, average of about four warnings for every citation that our officers issue to the boating public. Uh, we also had 14 BUI arrests, boating under the influence arrests, including one for drugs, uh, and that was marijuana. And our highest alcohol concentration was a 0.237. Uh, the boat in Pennsylvania, you have to be, uh, the legal limit is 0 0.08, just like you are on a highway and driving under influence. So you can see that a 0.237 is, is quite high. Um, we also this year uh, significantly increased our public information and education presence with social media as well as print and uh, TV spots. Uh, thanks to the executive director and all those involved uh, to uh, that took part in this media blitz. And with that, is there any questions about Operation Drywater? Uh, 
Next slide, please. All right, the next item for uh, consideration is a proposed rulemaking amending section 111.6 in Berks County. And the presenter is again to Colonel Britcher. Uh, thank you, Wayne. As uh, mentioned, we have a proposed rulemaking amendment to section 111.6 in Berks County. The 111 section of our regulations are specific bodies of water for boating regulations. Uh, 111.6 Berks County, spe specifically Blue Marsh Lake, which is a, a 1,148 acre flood control project managed by the Army Corps of Engineers. And we have several regulations under 111.6 for that that include um, uh, exhaust, no wake zones, and water skiers. Uh, those three regulations differ from the rest of the Commonwealth based on the relationship we have with the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, specifically, what we're looking at changing is subsection three states that a boat may not tow more than one water skier. Uh, this limitation is different than the rest of the state where the water ski regulation is based on the, the boat's overall person's capacity. Next slide, please. Uh, recently, the Army Corps have changed their local policy and would like to adopt the standard skiing regulation. And they have petitioned the, the Fish and Boat Commission to make the same change in Title 58 so that our officers could continue to assist with enforcement. Um, the proposed amendment was reviewed and approved by the Boating Advisory Board, their last meeting on June 23rd of this year. And staff is going to propose that the section 111.6 um, subsection three um, be removed. Next slide, please. So the recommendation is staff recommend that the commission approve the publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary. And if adopted on final rulemaking, this amendment would go into effect upon publication in a PA bulletin. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I'd like to move to accept the staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Goodney. I second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. Next item, next item for consideration is an amendment to section 111.43 of our regulations concerning Mercer County. Again, the presenter is Colonel Britcher. Thank you. Uh, one more for you, commissioners, on, on the boating side of things. This is an amendment to section 111.43 in Mercer County, specifically Shenango River Lake. Um, similar to the last proposal, this is an Army Corps property for flood control. It's a 3,560-acre 3, um, project in Mercer County. This busy boating destination, again, is regulated by 58 PA code, section 111.43. Uh, the Shenango River Lake has several regulations that deviate from the statewide recreational boating regulations when boating on project waters. Specifically in subsection one, uh, there's a limitation on horsepower in the area known as the Penn Central Railroad or the Levittsburg Causeway to the Ohio line. Uh, specifically right now, there's a 10 horsepower restriction. Next slide, please. Uh, recently, the Army Corps leadership changed their local policy and are adopting a 20 horsepower restriction area in area west of that causeway. Uh, they have also petitioned the, the PFBC to make the same change in Title 58. So again, we could uh, assist with uh, enforcement. This proposed amendment was reviewed and approved by the Boating Advisory Board at their 20, June 23rd meeting. 
and staff is proposing that we change in subsection one. You can see uh, the use of motorboats in excess of 20 horsepower is prohibited in area west of the Penn Central Railroad or the Levittsburg Causeway to the Ohio line. We're going to remove the 10 and up it to 20 horsepower. Next slide, please. So staff recommend recommendation says that staff recommend that the commission approve the publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary. If adopted on final rulemaking, this amendment will go into effect upon publication in the PA bulletin. Thank you. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Dan Pastoria. I move that we adopt the staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Al. I second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. The next item is a discussion item. This is the strategic plan for the management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania. This will be presented by Dave Nyhart, and um, we will proceed through this item, and then we will uh, likely reach the top of the hour in our scheduled break. So I turn it over to Dave Nyhart. So good morning, commissioners. As Wayne mentioned, my name is David Nyart. I'm the agency's cool water unit leader. This presentation will focus on providing a summary of public comments that were received on the trout plan. Before we cover the public comments, I will provide you with a brief overview of the plan, including the goal, who was involved, and what steps were taken to develop the plan. Next slide, please. So what is the goal of the trout management plan? to ensure adequate protection is afforded to Pennsylvania's wild trout resources and that fisheries provided through the management of wild trout and the stocking of adult and fingerling trout provide high quality angling opportunities in Pennsylvania. Next slide, please. So the development process. Uh, first off, staff from the Fish and Boat Commission for multiple bureaus, including fisheries, hatcheries, outreach, education and marketing, as well as administration, reviewed the previous plan that was dated 2015 through 2017. As part of this internal review, staff identified priority issues from the previous plan that should be incorporated in the new plan. Incorporation of, of old issues doesn't necessarily mean that they weren't completed as part of the old plan, it's that they were continued to be high priority issues, things like the unassessed waters program, improvement to public asset access, and continuing habitat projects. On top of identifying um, Previous priority issues for this plan, we also identified new issues that needed to be addressed and incorporated in the new plan. Next slide, please. So next, a trout work group was formed. So PFEC staff, along with commissioners, met with a group of anglers to review and discuss trout management needs and things that they wanted to see included in the next plan. This happened on two different occasions. The first was back in December of 2017 and again in March of 2018. Next slide, please. So the elements of the trout management plan, there were 40 priority issues covering four resource categories. And we broke these down into four categories and they include wild trout streams, stock trout streams, stock trout lakes, Lake Erie and tributaries. Next slide, please. 
So as previously mentioned, there were 19 issues that carried over from the previous plan that were gonna be included in this most current plan. Also, we identified 21 new issues uh, to be included in the plan. There was 13 pertaining to wild trout streams, six included in the stock trout streams, one in stock trout lakes, and then one also in Lake Erin's tributaries. And a couple of things that uh, key importance in here, these would include things like the need for angler use, harvest and opinion surveys, increased outreach to promote our wild and trout stock resources, and also issues addressing climate change. Next slide, please. So once staff finalized the, the draft, for, draft version uh, at the end of 2019, we presented the draft plan, the, the trial plan to commissioners on two occasions. First, on January 6th of 2020, and again on January 23rd of 2020. After these briefings, we took the comments that we received, uh, and we updated the trial plan, uh, and updated the, tra the draft version and posted it on the PFPC website for the period of 30 days to allow the public to comment and review. And this occurred in mid-May on May 26th through June 24th. In total, we received comments from 139 individuals. For the sake of time, we cannot cover all 139 comments, many of, many of which included comments on multiple issues and strategies. We summarized the most commonly received comments for this discussion item. Inclusion in this presentation does not mean that the comments will be incorporated into the final version of the trial plan. They are being presented as a means to be as transparent as possible. As previously mentioned, we summarized the most common comments and separated them into four categories, including general comments, wild trout comments, stock trout comments, and finally, Lake Erie and its tributaries. Most comments were received pertaining to wild trout issues which is not surprising given the number of issues specific to wild trout in the plan. Due to the diversity of anglers in Pennsylvania, it was nearly impossible to develop a plan that all anglers could agree on. But for the most part, commenters supported the plan or portions of the plan. So whether they were diehard stock trout anglers, uh, wild trout enthusiasts, or a combination of both, enjoyed fishing in streams or lakes, it was obvious there was something in this plan that appealed to most anglers. Next slide, please. So now we'll review uh, the comments that we, that we included in the general comment uh, portion. The most frequent comment we received was support for the trout plan or, or portions of the trout plan. In general, people were pretty satisfied with trout fishing in Pennsylvania. Some additional general comments, there was a support for increased cost of fishing license and trout permits. Commenters also suggested that there needs to be more emphasis on educating anglers on proper fish handling. Common, commenters supported connecting, educating, and informing underrepresented communities while providing angling experiences and conservation opportunities to these underrepresented populations. Another common comment we received was the need for uh, a hotline. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. Announcement 8, switch 9, 6, dash 2, 7. I'm sorry, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry, I had a technical difficulty, I'm sorry. Um, also, there needs to be more control, uh, there needs to be more in our plan to deal with AIS than what is currently uh, involved. So AIS would be aquatic invasive species. Next slide, please. This is uh, Commissioner Ally. Did everybody else go blank or just me? No, we're, we're having a problem with the slide. Okay, sorry. Tell you what, Wayne, uh, this is Tim Schaefer. Why don't we take a five minute break now? Um, and we'll come back um, in, in five minutes and get restarted. So, uh, Wayne, will that work? Yes, it will. So, uh, uh, it is 11.01 now. We'll turn off the mics and then uh, turn everything back on at 11.02. Well, it's 11.02 now. We'll turn it back on at 11.07. Thank you, everyone. We're back in five.
This is Wayne Melnick again. Uh, it is 11.07. Uh, can I have uh, tech support signal that we're ready to go by uh, unmuting the microphones and then muting every, mi every microphone again? All right, we are back. Uh, Dave Nyhart, can you continue with your presentation, please? Yes, so I'll just start back and we'll just go over this slide briefly again um, and then proceed. So the most frequent comment we received was support for the trout plan or portions of the trout plan. And in general, most folks were happy with trout fishing in Pennsylvania. A couple additional general comments we received, there's support for increased cost of fishing license and trout permits. Commenters also wanted to see an emphasis on educating anglers on proper handling technique. There was support for connecting, educating, and informing underrepresented communities and provide angling experiences and conservation opportunities to these groups. Also, was quite a few comments mentioning that a, a hotline needs to be um, established. That way, as a means for people to report fishing violations as they see them. Commenters also feel that we need more in our plan to control aquatic basic aquatic invasive species. Next slide, please. Commenters also suggested that there needs to be improvements to the PFBC's marketing program to expand the promotion of wild trout, stock trout, and habitat improvement that's been done throughout the state. They also suggested that we use volunteers more during our PFBC operations. Other suggestions included setting up an option in PAL system, so the system that is used to purchase and sell, or to sell fishing license that would allow anglers to provide contact information that could be later used to uh, get some additional information from them as far as their opinions. One thing that came pretty apparent was there was confusion regarding the PFBC trout management plan, the plan that was up for draft, or the draft that was up for public comment and the operational guidelines. Staff will clarify this as part of the introduction to the trout plan. But quickly, the trout, the trout plan that was up for public comment is what provides the framework for specific tasks and program objectives during the duration of the plan. However, the operational guidelines is an aid in the management of trout stocking, wild trout programs, and special regulation programs. As part of these guidelines, this is where we provide an overview of the resource and its users. It also describes the criteria that is used to determine wild trout classifications and our stocking allocation criteria. This is where we detail the significant amount of research and work that's been completed by our agency, all of which has guided the development of policies, regulations, and management strategies aimed at protecting, conserving, and enhancing our state's cold water resources. The operational guidelines is available on our website. Currently, it's the fourth edition is available. The fifth edition is currently in draft form, and it's anticipated that be made available to the public in the beginning of 2021. Next slide, please. So now we'll discuss the summary of the comments that we got regarding wild trout management. Next slide, please. So the most common thing, comment that we received in regard to wild trout was to stop stocking over wild trout, particularly class A and class B wild trout populations. Again, this was by far the most common comment we received in regard to wild trout management. Um, staff are currently developing options for improved management of these waters. Also, commenters think we need to do a better job protecting wild trout. And some of the reasons or some of the ways they uh, suggested was they supported an increase for the use of special regulations. They also provided a bunch of waters and regulations that they would like to see placed on these waters. Not only should we do a better job protecting wild trout, they suggested that we prioritize and better pr protect our wild trout populations. There's also support for sampling water, wild trout streams to inform management. So basically a continuation of the Onassess program. We received mixed feedback regarding publishing Class A and Class B wild trout lists. Some people were in favor of it as a means to ident clearly identify places to fish. Other people were opposed to this because they thought that uh, by providing this information to anyone and everyone that there could be the potential for over harvest and increased fishing pressure on some of these waters. They also suggested that we need to better understand and protect migratory trout. So again, this would be some of our larger systems where trout may congregate during certain times of the year. Next slide, please.
They also mentioned that we need to better protect our cool water refuge areas during the summer months on, on large wild trout streams. They suggested um, a support in changing the trophy trout regulation, specifically a minimum length to 18 inches and change the harvest limit to one fish per day. Also in regard to trophy trout regulations, they, some people were in favor of eliminating the program altogether and rolling it into an existing program, whether it be catch and release regulations or harvest slot limit regulations. Also some commenters in regard to trophy trout indicated that they, we should rename the program. They thought that the term trophy may be viewed by some anglers as a goal and result in increased harvest of the largest fish in the population. Commenters also support an increased use of catch and release all tackle regulations. There was also continued support for an increased use of the harvest slot limit regulations. A couple waters of note, they like this program on Penn's Creek, and they also provided some additional waters that they'd like to see this regulation um, be placed on. Next slide, please. There was support for no longer stocking brook trout into watersheds that support wild brook trout uh, and increasing rainbow trout stocking. Although there was concerns and questions regarding the stocking of rainbow trout, and in particular brown trout in the waters that support wild brook trout. Uh, staff will clarify this component as part of the new plan. There was also suggesting, comment, or commenters also suggested that we increase the use of sterile triploid trout. There was support for evaluating the sublethal effects of hooking mortality. Again, commenters provided a bunch of their thoughts as well. Commenters also support the increase, uh, increased designation of wilderness trout streams. This is a program that really we haven't added anything to it for in the last decade and a half, so there's continued support for increase to some of these waters being designated into this program. There was also confusion around the harvest period of wild trout streams, so we'll try and um, include some additional information in the final draft plan uh, of ways to improve that. Next slide, please. There was continued support for encouraging the Department of Environmental Protection to redesignate Chapter 93 designations of streams that the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission designated as wild trout and or Class A wild trout streams. As far as habitat work goes, uh, commenters thought it was important, but they'd like to see us focus our efforts on uh, habitat work pertaining to wild trout streams. There was support for education on pathogens and invasive species that impact wild trout. Also support for conducting updated angler use and harvest and economic surveys. Again, this is something that our information is becoming dated on, so there's continued support for providing some more current information. Also received support for working with agencies to ensure road culverts are installed to allow fish passage. Again, stream connectivity is a very uh, important thing right now, so it's nice to see that the public is still supporting these efforts. They also suggest that we need to improve our trout fisheries, our tailwater trout fisheries across the state. And two systems that they pointed out were the Allegheny and Lehigh Rivers. And lastly, they think that there's, they suggest a uh, need to increase staff and funding for fishing easement acquisition, so to acquire some new property along wild trout resources. Next slide, please. So now we'll get into and summarize the comments regarding the management of stock trout streams and lakes. Next slide, please. So one of the most frequent comments we received uh, was requesting that we stop and that stop announcing the exact date of trout stockings. We go back to how it used to be when we only announced the week of. Uh, so this was a pretty frequent comment. Uh, people like to see us, again, get away from announcing and providing them with uh, the exact date that trout stockings occur. They also suggested we increase the numbers, stocking numbers and frequency on high use waters. There was support requests for better, better spreading out of fish during the stocking period. Commenters, for the most part, supported the use of more special regulation waters in our stock trout program. They feel that uh, increased poaching on stock trout waters is definitely occurring, and because of that, there needs to be more enforcement in WCOs uh, out and about to patrol the areas during, during uh, trout season. We received support for establishing a stocking authorization. We also received, op re received opposition for establishing a stocking authorization. So again, mixed comments in regards to the establishment of a stocking authorization. Next slide, please. 
Commenters also suggested increased funding and resources to the cooperative nursery units or the cooperative nurseries. Uh, they felt that, that the current staffing situation needs to be improved upon. There needs to be some additional resources allocated to them to better um, help manage the, the uh, cooperative nursery program. But also there was comments re requesting an increased oversight and enforcement of cooperative nurseries. Uh, the most common thing uh, pertaining to that was they'd like to know where these fish are being stocked. There's no way for anglers to know uh, where co-ops are stocking their fish. Also, there was support for new delayed harvest artificial lures only regulations being placed on some of our stock trout waters. The main reason behind that is they thought that the angling quality was greatly reduced in streams after a week of stocking. So by putting a regulation in place, it would allow for a uh, higher quality stock trout fishery for extended periods of time. There was support and requests for increasing the number and length of Keystone Select areas. Also pertaining to Keystone Select areas, uh, anglers commented they felt that there were very few fish being stocked that were over 15 and 16 inches in length, so they'd like to see some bigger fish being stocked into these sections. We also commenters supported the cessation and reduction of brook trout stocking. Again, we, there was also opposition on this, so we had comments coming in from both ends of the spectrum in regard to this. Commenters supported stocking more golden rainbow trout, and this is something that we started in 2020 this year not only increasing the numbers, but we also increased the frequency by including some stockings for the first time and during the in-season period. So there was definitely support for that as well, and continued support. Commenters, for the most part, con uh, continued to support the Mentor Youth Day. The one of the biggest issues they had is although they supported the program, they like to see adults um, not being able to fish during the Mentor Youth Day. Next slide, please. There was support for evaluating and enhancing, enhancing, evaluating, uh, and enhancing the fingerling trout stock program. There was also support, as I mentioned before, for increasing the use of triploid trout. So triploid trout would be sterile trout. There was a request to maintain the opening day of trout season. Some anglers really enjoy the opening day of trout season, but also received plenty of comments indicating that they would like to see us do away with the opening day of trout season. Commenters also um, requested that we close stock trout lakes from March 1st to the opening day. And again, we also received comments asking us to increase the number of stock trout lakes that are open to year-round fishing. So again, comments coming from both ends of the spectrum on this as well. It became apparent that there was uh, needed some additional clarification regarding whether wild trout streams can or cannot be stocked. And lastly, as far as stock trout goes, commenters suggested that we move away from the put and take culture in Pennsylvania. Next slide, please. The last thing we'll talk about is the comments that we received in regard to trout management in Lake Erie and its tributaries. Next slide. The most common comment we received was in regard to um, krill limits, uh, not only on steelhead but brown trout. Commenters requested that steelhead, that the krill limit of steelhead be reduced from three to either two or one per day, and reduce the krill limit of brown trout to one per day. And the rationale behind that was Anglers travel far and wide to catch these fish and that these fish are too, too valuable to harvest, so we need to limit the amount of harvest that is occurring. This was the most common comment we received in regard to Lake Erie and its tributaries management. Some commenters wanted to see us implement a harvest slot limit from 24 to 26 inches. And some commenters also mentioned they'd like to see and increase the minimum size limit to 24 or 26 inches. Other issues that the commenters brought up is that the rate of posting, loss of public access on Lake Erie's tributaries far exceeds the rate of which the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's easement acquisition can acquire land. They feel that private land is being profited on by fishing guides, so they'd like to see an increase in the amount of property that we um, can purchase or, or get easements on in the Lake Erie region. Next slide, please. There was support for updating and for obtaining updated angler use and harvest information on Lake Erie and its tributaries. They feel that social media has increased the amount of, of angling and pressure that is occurring, uh, and as a result, additional harvest is, is occurring. So they'd like to see some updated information um, on Lake Erie and its tributaries. Commenters also suggested that the average size of steelhead has declined over time. There was also support for eliminating the put grow put-and-grow Lake, Lake Erie Brown Trout Program due to its poor returns. 
The last thing is that they really appreciated the brown trout brood stock that are stocked in the Lake Erie and its tributaries during November and December. They felt that these stockings really added a whole other level of excitement during that time of the year. Next slide, please. So the draft plan was completed uh, in the end of 2019. And then early in January of 2020, we briefed the commissioners and we updated the plan uh, based off of their input. And after the plan was updated, it was put up for public comment on our website for 30 days from mid-May to mid-June. Um, staff are currently, we, we summarized the comments and we're currently in the process of finalizing the plan and hopefully that will be finalized sometime this summer. Anybody have any questions? Are you, seeking, are you seeking questions and comments or just questions at this time? This is Richard Lewis, Commissioner Lewis. Commissioner Lewis, you, you can ask questions. It, it's, it's really whatever you want to do. Okay. Dave, um, now I've, since this plan has been out recently, I did receive a pretty strong comment back from one of the cooperative nurseries, Yellow Breaches of Conservation. Uh, Anglers and Conservation Association, they have a cooperative nursery stocks 35,000, grows and stocks 35,000 trout. And if, if they're required to uh, post the dates that they stock, they feel it's going to be really harmful because um, they have 1,300 1, members and a good half of those members are only members because they get the information on trout stocking from the newsletter that goes out. Um, and they feel that if they lost half those members, they would lose half their income, and therefore they would not have the $23,000 a year they need to grow the fish. So I'm not sure what the solution is there, but I wanted to make sure that you knew about at least that nursery is very much opposed to uh, releasing the, the actual stocking dates. Uh, and it's something we should think about. They also said if they do release the dates, they would have people following their trucks around as they sometimes do, but uh, with their stocking, they don't have a WCO following them to supervise traffic, and they feel it might be a safety hazard problem too. So I'll stop there and just let you know that that's a strong comment I received from them. All right, thank you, Commissioner Lewis. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, I'd like to make some comment. Uh, I think we need to rethink the brook trout uh, reduction in uh, the number of brook trout that we are going to rear and on not giving them to co-op nurseries in the future. I've received a lot of comment from co-op uh, across the state, not happy with us wanting to do that. Uh, and sit down with our co-op people and uh, uh, we can agreement that uh, I think everybody could live with. Uh, I know staff have concerns about uh, gill lice and uh, and that, but uh, I, I think that's something that we could uh, resolve and uh, find some middle ground for everybody. Uh, also, like Richard Lewis said about uh, clubs and announcing stockings, uh, I think we need to let that up to the discretion of uh, individual clubs there, what works best for them. Uh, definitely there needs to be accountability as uh, to where their fish went. Uh, perhaps uh, that could be posted uh, on a co-op page on our website. Uh, uh, the annual reports could be uh, reviewed after clubs submit them. Uh, but those are some of the concerns I have. That's all I have at the moment. All right, thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Are there any more questions or comments? Hearing none, thank you, Dave. Let's proceed to the next slide. The next item for uh, consideration is a proposed rulemaking amending miscellaneous special regulations at Bald Eagle Creek Center County. And again, the 
presenter is Dave Nyhart. Okay, thank you, Wayne. So as, main, as Wayne mentioned, um, before we get into it, I just will give you a, a quick overview of the proposed regulation, provide you some additional background information on why we're recommending the proposal, and ultimately uh, where we decided this proposal to take place. So a little bit of the background information. The delayed harvest artificial lures only Keystone Select Trout Waters Program has developed into an extremely popular program with anglers. Uh, with anglers managed under these regulations, receiving oftentimes high angler use and satisfaction. The Keystone Select program started in 2016 at the time, was applied to eight waters that were currently managed as DH areas. Additional waters were added in 2017 and 18, also added a water in 2019 and extended the limits of some sections currently under that program in 2019 as well. So currently there are 23 sections that fall into this program and its increase in popularity has resulted in the staff recommending additional waters be added to the program. Keystone Select Trout waters receive additional brood fish anywhere from 14 to 20 inches and they're stocked at a rate of up to 250 trout per mile. Again, this rate far exceeds any of the other allocations that are assigned to our stock trout streams as far as brood go. Staff have been working to identify a stream section to pilot an all-tackle version of this program. This is something that we've been working on for some time now, and we believe that uh, we've identified a reach on Baltico Creek in Center County for inclusion into this program. Staff will compare angler use and preferences on this reach to other waters that are currently included in the DH, Artificial Lures Only Keystone Select Program. Next slide, please. So this map will show you uh, Baltico Creek in its entirety. Uh, Baltico Creek is roughly 53 miles in length, and it originates just outside of the borough of, or the town of Port Matilda, and it flows in the northeast direction to its confluence with the west branch of the Susquehanna River, just outside the town of Lock Haven, the city of Lock Haven. For management purposes, Baltico Creek is broken into six sections. Section one, so up near uh, Port Matilda, is a very small stream section. It is not stocked by us. Section two, which is just downstream of Port Matilda, is a stock trout water. Section three, that runs basically from Port Matilda all the way to Milesburg, is also a stock trout water. Section four, just downstream of Milesburg, is one of our 13 stock Class A sections. And then section five, below the reservoir, is not stocked with adult trout, but it's part of our fingerling stocking program. And finally, the downstream most section, section six, is not stocked by us. So next slide, please. So the purpose, or so as far as the location of where we're proposing this, it's part of Section 3. So Section 3 is currently a stock trout water, and staff identified a 0.86-mile stretch of water in the vicinity of just downstream of Port Matilda and upstream of the town of Julian. Next slide, please. So why did staff identify this particular stretch of, of Baltimore Creek for this regulation? A lot of it had to do with ownership. Um, the majority of the property that we're proposing this regulation uh, falls on Wildlife for Everyone Foundation's Soaring Eagle Wetland. This, this area currently has a lot of amenities that allow it to be um, included in this program, and there's also some planned amenities for next year that will be upgraded. And a couple of them we'll discuss is currently um, there's a, a fairly large parking area and access over the railroad tracks from 220 that allows for anglers to uh, access this area. They're planning an ADA compliant boardwalk. So this boardwalk will border a uh, majority of the wetlands and will run, uh, at portions will parallel uh, Bald Eagle Creek, allowing for access. There'll be handicap accessible fishing platform. So that is really um, something unique there. So not only are we gonna have a special regulation water in place, we're gonna have uh, a, a handicap accessible pier that allow people to fish this. So it'll truly be accessible to, to anyone. As mentioned, there is a parking area. They also plan on putting in some restrooms and an educational pavilion. Most of these amenities are supposed to be uh, scheduled for completion during 2021. On top of the amenities that are currently in plan to be there, there's some, been some pretty significant in-stream habitat work has been completed on a stretch of the water. Uh, mud sills, rock deflectors, and random boulders were also put in place in the stream. So not only does this stream have good access, we feel it has the habitat needed to support a uh, enhanced stock trout program. On top of landowner support, there's also been local support for the proposed regulation. Again, this regulation is something staff have been looking into for quite some time now. 
we've had some meetings with with individuals and we really feel that this is going to be a, a hit um, or uh, su supported locally. It's located in close proximity to populated areas. As the previous maps indicated, you can see that there's some heavily populated areas just in the vicinity of this, this area, places like State College, Belfont, Milesburg, Port Matilda, and just upstream a little ways is, a, is the city of Tyrone. So this is kind of, it falls in the heart of, of this area in Center County, and we really feel that given its proximity to these populated areas, it's gonna get some good angler use. Lastly, Central Pennsylvania currently does not have a water in the Keystone Select uh, trout waters program. If you were to plot the 23 sections that are managing this program on a map, uh, it would become pretty apparent that there's a void in central Pennsylvania. So by including this water in this program, it'll fill in that gap. Next slide, please. So what is the regulation that we're proposing? Again, this is located in Center County. Uh, it's a stretch of water just under a mile length on Bald Eagle Creek. And the limits would be from 0 0.3 miles upstream of Steel Hollow Run, 0.48 miles downstream of Steel Hollow Run. The regulations would be open to fishing year-round. Again, all tackle types are permitted. From June 15th through Labor Day, the daily curl limit for trout is three combined species. Trout must be nine inches in length to be killed or possessed. From the day after Labor Day through June 14th, no trout may be killed or possessed. Inlet regulations apply to all their species, and this miscellaneous special regulation will remain in effect until further notice. Next slide. So staff recommend the commission approve the publication of notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary. If approved on final rulemaking, the amendment will go into effect on January 1st, 2021. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Brock, I'll make that motion. This is Commissioner Anderson. I will second it. Hearing a motion in a second. Do we have any discussion? Yeah, Dave. This Dave. This is uh, Eric Hussar. Um, when you were describing this uh, earlier, you mentioned Keystone Select. Um, this is, in fact, going to be a miscellaneous special reg, not a Keystone Select section. Correct. Well, the, the Keystone Select program doesn't require anything as far as designation. It's more of a less a sub-program that's placed on our DH areas. Um, so yes, there'll be a miscellaneous special regulations. Per, uh, uh, it'll, it'll fall into the miscellaneous special regulations, but we can still include it into the Keystone Select program. Okay, is that is that because of the all? Just clarify that. Is that is that because of the all tackle? Right. So as mentioned, our DH areas right now um, are only limited to artificial ores only. So right. As, right. As a trial basis, to put this in a pile to see if it's worth moving forward, whether it's adding this as a, its own program or not. You would like to do something with all tackle, and for that reason, we have to put it into a miscellaneous special regulation because currently there's nothing that allow us would allow us to have a DH all tackle um, regulation put in place. Okay, thanks Dave for the clarification. That's... Thank you. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, I will call roll call vote. <laughs> Commissioner Ally? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth? Yes. Commissioner Gibney? Yes. Commissioner Hassar? Yes. Commissioner Pastore? Yes. Commissioner Small? Commissioner Kaufman? Yes. Uh, President Lewis? Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. Next item for uh, consideration is an amendment to section 57.8A relating to class A wild trout streams. And the presentation will be made by Chris Kuhn. 
Good morning, commissioners and members of the public. Um, I'm going to be taking you through the next six uh, agenda items here for fisheries. And the first of which, as, as Wayne had mentioned, is amendments to section 578A of class, class A wild trout streams. And so before I get into the substance of, of this proposal, uh, it's appropriate to provide an overview of Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's classification system for wild trout. So we have an alphabetic system um, that ranges from class A wild trout streams, which are the topic of, of, of this discussion here this morning, uh, down to class E streams with, where there's no wild trout. Our next classification up is class D and also class C. Both of these are uh, non-species specific. So in other words, these determinations or classifications are made based on total trout biomass, not species specific. And these are determined through uh, biologist surveys that are done through primarily weightable electrofishing surveys, in some cases on our larger waters through uh, boat electrofishing surveys, but for the vast majority weightable electrofishing surveys that account for at least 10% of the uh, section length of interest of the stream section. And so class D is total biomass of just greater than, than zero kilograms per hectare, uh, but less than 10 kilograms per hectare. So at, at, in review on that, that's, that's basically an area calculation, basically the number uh, or the, the, the pounds, the weight of fish by area for a particular stream section. The next classification is class C. Uh, that's our next one up. That's total wild trout biomass of greater than or equal to 10 kilograms per hectare and less than 20 kilograms per hectare. So to put this into context too, in terms of stocking, which is what we're gonna talk a little bit here more about with this amendment. And so the, the class E and D streams that constitute uh, streams that we stock in our stock trout waters program, um, those are 85% of, of, the, of the stream sections that are stocked um, by the Fish and Boat Commission. Class C is another 10%. So the vast majority of the streams that are stocked by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission um, are 96% are in these lower biomass classifications and they're stocked because they wouldn't otherwise provide recreational angling opportunities for trout. Next we have class B. That's, that's where we get into the species specific uh, biomass classifications. And, and so for class B brook trout streams, we have a, a biomass of greater than 20 kilograms per hectare and less than 30 kilograms per hectare. Uh, for wild brown trout, it's greater than or equal to 20 kilograms per hectare and less than 40 kilograms per hectare. Next slide. And so moving on to our highest designation, which is class A's. So class A's, uh, again, our species specific would be have a little bit more complexity to this designation with wild brook trout fisheries uh, being uh, or comprising a biomass of anything greater than 30 kilogram per kilograms per hectare and our wild brown trout um, fisheries uh, being class A wild brown trout fisheries being greater than 40 kilograms per hectare. Uh, we also have wild rainbow trout fisheries that are designated class A. And this is somewhat of, of a different biomass classification in that it, it accounts for the unique aspects of our, our, our wild rainbow trout populations in Pennsylvania, uh, being that there are few and far between and typically loca located in our limestone spring streams or limestone influence streams. And that is uh, uh, less than 15 uh, centimeters or approximately six inches of greater than two kilograms per hectare, again, to account for the unique aspect of rainbow trout, wild rainbow trout fisheries in Pennsylvania. Um, and finally, we have a, a, a mixed wild trout fishery. It's, it's multiple species combined. So it could be, could be wild brown and, and, and brook. It could be rainbow and brook. Um, and that is a total combined trout biomass of greater than 40 kilograms per hectare, but individual trout biomass must be less than 75% of the total 
combined biomass. And so I, I referenced before the, the number of stock, um, 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 or the percentage rather of, 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 of stock streams that fall into some of these classifications. Uh, for class, class Bs on, on the last slide, it's, it's a little over 3%. And, 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 and we do stock some Class A's, uh, 13 Class A's comprising 14 or 40 rather stream miles, and that's less than 1% of all stocked waters that we stock in Pennsylvania. And Class A's represent the best of the Commonwealth's wild resource and only comprise a pop, approximately 3% of all flowing water in Pennsylvania. And that's currently 1,032 Class A stream sections uh, totaling um, 2,759 stream miles. Next slide. And so as a prelude to the forthcoming discussion regarding the proposed rulemaking here, uh, I'd like to provide a little bit of history of, of the stocking of Class A. So prior to, of Class A, so prior to 2015, um, there, there was no formal mechanism to stock Class A's other than to, to provide an exemption uh, to folks. Um, However, um, based on staff knowledge of, of, of some streams out there that, are being, that were being stocked that also supported extremely high biomass brown trout uh, populations, in, in effective January 1st, 2015, the statement of policy was amended to require the executive director to obtain board approval prior to granting permission to stock any Class A's. And so I won't go ahead and read this. You can you can see the, the the language as it currently reads. I'll just I'll just emphasize the portion in bold and underlined. So that the, in in 2015 this amendment was revised to read with with rare exceptions. These stream sections are managed solely for the perpetuation of the wild trout fishery with no stocking. However, there may be circumstances that justify stocking a Class A wild trout stream. Prior to granting permission to stock a Class A wild trout stream under Section 71.4 relating to stocking of designated waters, the executive director will obtain the approval of the commission. And so this is, this is at, at, at the center of, of this proposed rulemaking here today. Next slide. And so following this amendment in 2015, 15, uh, staff developed internal decision-making criteria to allow for the continued stocking uh, by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission of, of a handful of Class A waters. Um, 13 stream sections stocked by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, as I previously alluded to, were suspected to support very strong Class A uh, wild brown trout populations. However, these were not officially designated as Class A wild trout streams. In general, these streams were characterized by high angler use. They were located in uh, or in proximity to high density human population centers and, and staff believe they were of sufficient size and character to support both stocked and wild trout fisheries. Um, and it's also important to note that these, these high biomass wild brown trout populations developed in the presence of stocking and high angler use. Next slide, please. And so these are the criteria, the internal decision-making criteria that staff used to, to determine whether it may be appropriate to continue stocking uh, a, a newly designated Class A stream section. The first is that the stream section uh, had to be stocked by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission with adult trout the year immediately prior to the designation. Uh, the second is to account for the high angler use. So angler use in the stream section had to equal or exceed 50th percentile during opening weekend of trout season. So we have a rather robust data set in fisheries uh, uh, that basically uh, assesses angler use on the opening weekend of trout season. So these streams represented the, the above the 50th percentile of all waters surveyed throughout the state. And there's also another caveat to this that's not listed here is that 
that uh, also um, we would consider uh, waters that are managed or, or, or regulated with special regulations under 58 PA code section 65. Additionally, um, one of the things we, we, we put in uh, to the internal decision-making criteria is that if we were to decide to continue stocking a Class A, the trout species stock would have to be different from the primary component of the wild trout population. Um, furthermore, uh, stocking numbers and frequencies would not exceed those of the year prior to the Class A designation. And, 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 and importantly, uh, we hear, uh, you just heard from Dave Nyhart regarding the importance of, of brook trout uh, management and conservation in Pennsylvania. Stream sections managed for wild brook trout would not be eligible for stocking uh, uh, if, if they were designated Class A. And the, the other aspect that was added to um, the, the, the code then in 2015 was that the executive director will obtain commission approval prior to consideration of stocking any Class A stream section. Next slide. And so briefly, this, this map just uh, illustrates the, the geographic extent, extent of where we have the current 13 Class A uh, sections that are, that are stocked. Uh, they were um, uh, designated Class A between the periods of 2015 and 17 following uh, um, updated surveys on those stream population surveys to verify biomass, and you have a cluster of them there in the, in the, in the, in the um, cent central part of the state, including uh, Bald Eagle Creek, uh, two sections on Fishing Creek, uh, Penns Creek, and a section of Kishikawillis Creek. Then down in the south central portion, you have two sections of Yellow Creek, one of which is the catch and release fly fishing only section. Uh, then you have a cluster of streams, the majority of the streams uh, in this uh, over towards the eastern part of the state in uh, Little Lehigh Creek, two sections there, Martins Creek, and two sections of Monocacy Creek and a section of Poopoco Creek. Next slide, please. And so um, the vast majority of, of Class A stream sections, with the exception of these 13 that I ju we just talked about, are, are managed solely for wild trout with no stocking. Um, the st strategies to, staff frequently employ however, strategies to optimize stock trout angling near these newly designated Class A waters. And, and how we do this is we consistently respond to uh, public concerns regarding the discontinuance of stocking of a Class A stream section by explaining the importance of them, the high quality self-sustaining nature of these fisheries, as well as their social, ecological, and economic value. Um, but when, when streams uh, come off the stocking program or, or, or stocking is discontinued in favor of wild trout management when streams are designated as Class A, uh, we always look to add new stock trout waters in the vicinity of the new Class A stream. This is sometimes easier said than done. Oftentimes it's difficult to find um, uh, uh, waters that would be open to the public and negotiate that access with landowners, but this is the first thing we do. But in addition to that, we also look to increase stocking rates or, or, or frequency at nearby stock trout waters. So oftentimes uh, some, some waters in our stock trout waters program are not stocked at the maximum allowable rate. So in these situations, we have the opportunity to increase the number of fish that are stocked or perhaps add another uh, stocking to that water, add a second in-season stocking. And, and lastly, but definitely not um, low on the importance is we make recommendations to cooperative nurseries, anglers groups, and individuals to redirect fish stocked in the new in, an, in the new Class A section to other nearby waters, as previously discussed. This is in recogni recognition of 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 the notion that um, our our Class A waters are our best waters, and in the vast majority of these cases. Um, the, the preferred management option is for wild trout with no stocking. Next slide. 
And so historically, um, there's been very few Class A sections where stocking was considered or warranted. Um, however, there may be additional scenarios that warrant consideration for stocking in newly Class A wild trout streams. Um, some of these um, scenarios may include pre-existing youth fishing der derbies or fishing clubs and or private landowners that may be unaware of a, of a designation of Class A and continue to stock uh, without knowing the stream had been um, designated as such. And oftentimes, this is brought to our attention at the 11th hour right before um, a stocking is going to occur or a derby is going to occur. And currently, we don't have any mechanism in place to um, quickly and transparently respond to these types of, of, of requests. Um, private stockings are, are currently for the most part, unknown to the, to the Fish and Boat Commission until a landowner notifies us um, that, that they have something on the books and we're planning to stock a stream section that may be Class A. Um, so given this, there's, there, there may be some rare cases where stocking exemptions um, should be considered. Next slide. And so some of these scenarios, and I, I talked about the first one here a little bit uh, on the previous slide, is that uh, one is the pre-existing youth fishing derbies and special use areas. Uh, they would have to be properly permitted by the Fishing Boat Commission and have a history of more than one past occurrence. So there has to be some, some history there, not just uh, a, a one-year um, uh, fishing derby. Next we have um, pre-existing private stockings on private property on recently designated. Uh, and what I mean by recently designated, within, your, within one year of posting in the Pennsylvania Bulletin uh, stream sections. These stream sections should, should, would be closed to public angling at the time of a Class A designation and at least since 2010. Um, that is to um, account for, again, the history there, um, but to avoid for having a, a stream um, just closed down uh, immediately upon designation of Class A and then having a request come into stock. And so stocking records there, again, would also need to be verified by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission and have a history of more than one past occurrence. Next slide. And so the, the, the third scenario is essentially all the criteria that uh, I previously described that staff currently use to um, designate and, and, and continue stocking the 13 Class A stream sections. Um, so stream sections stocked by the Fish and Boat Commission as well as a cooperative nursery and or private group or individual the year prior to the designation. Again, they would have a history of more than one past occurrence. And these are uh, uh, intended for the robust Class A wild brown trout streams that receive high angler use in the urban and suburban areas. Basically, the streams that we feel are of sufficient size and character that can support both a Class A and a stock trout fishery. And the final scenario that, that I'll mention here today is that is one where uh, a, an entity previously received an exemption or a special activities permit uh, from the Fish and Boat Commission between 2010 and 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 present. Um, so this is this is essentially to account for uh, if if, if uh, say a youth, youth fishing derby was issued a special activities permit uh, in the past during that defined period. Uh, to hold a youth fishing derby, then we would be able to consider a request to continue that practice on those waters. Next slide. And so here we have the benefits and next steps. So this is, we look at this as a, as a common sense approach for dealing with a complex situation. Um, it, it provides a mechanism for transparent, timely, and consistent considerations of, of, of possible exemptions, and, and these criteria are meant to be restrictive, and they're designed to keep rare exemptions rare. Um, the criteria would essentially provide staff direction to guide decisions when un unusual situations arise, but would not automatically uh, result in continued stocking when criteria are met, as the vast majority 
of Class A stream sections are best managed solely for the wild trout with no stocking. And so consideration would be given to request for continued stocking in stream sections um, within one year of a section being designated as a Class A and posted in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Um, should an exemption be granted, the Fish and Boat Commission would determine, as with the, uh, we, we talked about with the 13 Class A's, determine the, the species of trout, the number of trout, the frequency of stocking, and this would be consistent with PFBC's current trout stocking allocation uh, system. And, and a history of stocking rates on those streams. Again, streams with wild, uh, any component of, of the wild trout fishery comprised of brook trout would not be considered. And so in order to proceed with this, uh, as I mentioned, oftentimes we hear uh, these, these requests to stock at the last minute, uh, we would need to provide a timely response to some of the, of these requests. So this would require the, to remove the requirement for the executive director to obtain commission approval from 578A. And so the next steps again with this would be if this is approved for a publication of notice of proposed rulemaking, it would then come back most likely as final rulemaking in January 2021. And you heard some discussion earlier from Dave Nyhart uh, where he referenced the operational guidelines for the management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania waters. We're working on an update now to this, um, and, but we need to time it with this amendment should it go through um, so that we can detail all the types of criteria that we will use and be transparent about that and list it in the fifth edition update plan for uh, early 2021. Next slide. And so this is this 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 is the language the the proposed uh, amendment to the language. So if you if you focus in on the bolded area towards the end, what we are proposing is to remove the language in the bracketed area that reads the executive director will obtain the approval of the commission. Remove that section in favor of new language that reads the executive director will consult internal decision-making criteria set forth in the operational guidelines for the management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania waters to consider the need for continued stocking at newly designated Class A wild trout streams. Consideration will only be given to request for continued stocking in stream sections within one year of the section being designated as Class A and posted in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. However, entities that previously received an exemption or a special activities permit for continued stocking between 2010 and the effective date of this amendment will be eligible for consideration. Next slide. Staff recommend that the commission approve the publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary. If adopted on final rulemaking, this amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Pastore. I, I will make a motion to adopt the staff recommendation. And this is Commissioner Kaufman. I'll provide a second to that for the recommendation. The motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Yeah, this is Commissioner Brock. Um, is this, it seemed like that was a really long um, discussion on something. Is, is this, this big, is it that big of an issue that we, you can't get a hold of the commissioners? I mean, has there been a time when, um, I mean, you know, throughout the code, we've been able to jump on the phone within, with 15 minutes notice in most cases. So I'm just a little confused as to what, what the real concern is. Uh, 
So Commissioner Brock, this is this is Chris Coon. So you know, as as I described in here, this is this is something that we we have experienced uh, as recently as 2019, where it, it literally is a last minute um, request. And so we want to have the flexibility to address these types of requests. We also want to use this as a mechanism to to publish criteria that we will use. Uh, to can be able to consider requests to be transparent in that regard. So that would be put things out there for the public so that they could consult and, and, and have, a, have an idea of what uh, exemptions may be considered, if any, in their particular situation. Well, I think, that, I think that's a good idea regardless. Um, I guess, I mean, in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, um, the executive director made the decision and the board ended up um, you know, ratifying that decision. Is that correct? That's how it went down? That is not correct to my knowledge. I don't believe there was ever any board action. Yeah, this is Andy Shields, uh, Commissioner Brock. Just, just in terms of logistics, as, as you know, in order to take a commission action, it requires a sunshine notice and it requires some time and what we experienced multiple times in 2019 where, as Chris has described, a very, very short notice of a couple days where the stocking was about to occur, either pre-season or in-season for a private purchaser. They'd made their purchase, they're about ready to stock. And in the cases that, that we went over uh, and looked at and considered, there was validity to allowing some of those to take place but they're certainly moving forward. It was very awkward and would be very difficult to get a quorum of commissioners together, present them with the information, get approval and do all of that in a very timely basis, um, more than once perhaps in a, in a season. And so that's the purpose of this is to put it out up front, make it very clear what those criteria are that the executive director will be using, expose that as through this proposed rulemaking process uh, between now and final rulemaking so the public can weigh in on that and provide comment if they desire. But it's, it's as much about transparency as it is about actual logistics of being able to get commissioners together to vote on something that with the right criteria, the executive director could take that action with full confidence of the commissioners. Thank you. Have we, have we ever said no? Yes, we have said no. And what, and what was the circumstances whereby we said no? Do you remember? Well, for a long time, I like, say listings, we were, we were pretty inflexible. Uh, the number of times that we said yes are fairly limited. One of them is Cross Fork Creek up in, in uh, Clinton or Potter County. That is, is part of the reason why there's a 2010 time limit uh, on that. And that decision was made uh, with the commissioners and, and to grant a stocking of a Class A. So that one went into effect and it required a renewal. And there were some, some uh, conditions put around that required a renewal letter, which, which has since occurred. And in other cases, we have said no. In some cases, one several years ago in Clearfield County, we found out that there was indeed a youth trout derby for a weekend on a stream and we met with the folks in the field and we made some agreements with them on what species they could stock and how they could operate it. And they were granted uh, that exception with the commissioner's approval uh, four or five years ago. And, and then more recently last year, there was the case on um, Warriors Mark Run, a tributary to Spruce Creek. And it was determined that a private fishing club had been stocking it for many decades and until it was brought before the commissioners for designation, it was unknown to us and there was no way for us to know that they were actually stocking, have a long stocking history. Okay, so those, so one, are, one those last, are three one, three real world examples. Okay. So, so one last comment, wouldn't it be better for us to give the executive director the ability to make that call when it's time sensitive, but, but keep the commissioners in the loop on, on all the other occasions? Well, I think that's that's what you're deciding today. Uh, whether you wish that to move forward for proposed rulemaking. 
Well, I, I think what we're saying is that the the the, um, the executive director would permanently have the the authority in all cases. Is that correct, or do I, am I not understanding the recommendation? They would have the authority based on um, the criteria that will be published in the operational guidelines. So he'll have the authority, but he needs to follow he or she, whoever the executive director is moving forward, would need to follow those guidelines as stated. So they wouldn't be able to make independent decisions that were outside the lines of the guidelines. If they wish to do that, they would have to uh, come back to the commissioners and talk about something else. But this is providing a framework for decision making that relieves the commissioners of, of an emergency type need to gather to make a decision and relieves the executive director of doubt and questioning on how to make those decisions. So it provides uh, some framework and transparency uh, to the public and to both the commissioners and the executive director. And this is Tim. I'll note that if the um, language that Chris provided, um, as Wayne also mentioned, at the beginning of the meeting was updated um, since it was originally proposed to incorporate that re direct reference to the operational guidelines. But Bill, I think your question wasn't really answered. The, the answer is that the executive director has the authority whether there is or is not any type of time sensitivity towards it. It applies in all cases. Isn't that correct? I, I, correct. Correct. Yeah, I'd like, I would just I would just recommend that we we include a time sensitive nature um, to to the to the language, and it can be you know whatever you think is appropriate. Um, but I'm I'm just not sure I'm comfortable letting go of that authority as a commissioner and the discussions that, that are part of that. This is uh, Commissioner Ally. Um, Bill, I would agree with that. And I think as long as it's not a time sensitive issue, that it could be brought before the commissioners. This is Commissioner Lewis. Is there some way we can come to a middle ground here with something like uh, with the executive director and the commissioner whose district this request comes from makes this decision? Because if you're going to be discussing this in streams in other parts of the state that I'm not familiar with, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to educate myself. I'm not going to prepare, but the assumption is that the stream uh, that's located in the district that that commissioner would know about that and have a opinion. This is this is Eric Hussar. Yeah, I don't see any reason why um, the commissioners can't convene and um, approve or not approve. Um, if we put these guidelines or criteria out. Um, these people stocking, I mean, that's their responsibility to get ahead of the game on this and not wait till the last minute. So in regards to that time sensitive issue, I mean, some of that responsibility lies on them and not just notifying us two weeks before a stocking. Um, this is Commissioner Charles Um I'm going to ask a question and answer it myself, but who is the first person or group that knows about this stocking? And I'd say it would be the co-op nurseries. Shouldn't it be their responsibility to ensure that it's not a Class A stream? Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. So, um, Wayne, I'm, I'm just thinking so procedurally here, we've uh, just to summarize the discussion, we've had some uh, conversation about the, the time sensitivity of it. Um, w would your recommendation be at this point to try to either look for some alternate language um, to, to vote on this as it is or to table it? Um, and, and admittedly, this is the maybe. 
tricky part of doing this uh, uh, meeting this way. Um, but Wayne, just given what you've heard, any any recommendation on what we ought to do here uh, today? Well, the first thing I'll say if it's if it's tabled today and comes back at the October meeting, that means it's not likely to be. Uh, finalized until the April 2021 meeting, and I'm not sure how that would affect uh, that uh, stocking season. Mm -hmm. so that's the first thing to, to keep in mind. Uh, if if it's not tabled, and we want to consider coming up with an amendment now, well, first I'd ask uh, Commissioner. Pastor, who made the motion, it, it, if he would uh, consent uh, to amending his motion, but then he then we would have to come up with what the the language is, and it seems to be the, the critical question is how do you craft language on what is you know, when when is it a time critical uh, situation that can't be. Uh, refer to the, the board and would have to be made by the executive director because because again uh, and the the board simply can't just get together and comply without uh, running afoul of the uh, Sunshine Act so we'd have to have uh, a public meeting advertised and then the board would have to uh, consider the issue which would uh, cause some some there would be some delay in setting that public meeting up so some someone would have to decide what is an appropriate uh, time that makes this uh, um, too short a, a period for the board to act and and come up with language for, for such an amendment. Commissioner Anderson here, I have a question for Wayne. Go ahead. Uh, can I go ahead and ask it? Go ahead. Uh, could this be worded in a manner that the district commissioner and the executive director uh, would jointly review this request and decide on it? Uh, yes. I mean, in that case, you have one commissioner taking uh, action with, with the executive director, so it's not uh, there's no quorum involved, um, so theoretically, yes. This is, this is Commissioner Lewis. That's the suggestion I also made, Don, that the, the commissioner whose district the water is in plus the executive director make the decision. Uh, I, I think that's a reasonable I think that, that would address the concern of uh, commissioners having a say in this and, and knowing what's going on in their district and to make that jointly with the executive director and uh, and staff. Can I, can I ask, this is Commissioner Brock. Wayne, um, when we do the notational votes, that's usually because they're time sensitive, correct? Uh, some, sometimes they are. Uh, and it, uh, the, the thing to remember with a notational vote is there cannot be any discussion uh, associated with the vote. So they're, 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 you, you could not discuss the pros or cons of a, um, a, a stocking decision and why, and you know, and let that influence your uh, so. Vote. So if the executive director and the regional commissioner make a recommendation for a notational vote, would that be allowed? Um, they, they, either uh, anybody can, uh, any commissioner or executive director can make a recommendation for a notational vote. And, and I would say, well, uh, maybe the, the thing about the notational vote. Somebody on the committee. And typically, there, there, there's not discussion there. That's because they're not a, a controversial item, and it's, it's relatively straightforward. So even, even if the board, um, even if a, a commissioner and the executive director um, would decide to vote 
would decide to approve it, I could see commissioners want at least one commissioner perhaps wanting to discuss that, which would not be possible with a notational vote. Well, Tim, um, I, uh, on Anderson here, I'd like to comment there. It was back to what Richard Lewis had said earlier um, that you know he would not be familiar with a particular stream in somebody else's district. I would have to agree that myself, I would not be familiar with a stream that would maybe be down in the southeast part of the state or in the northeast part of the state. Uh, I would, you know, trust that to the district commissioner there. I'd like to ask Commissioner Pastore if he would be willing to amend his uh, motion that he made uh, to include the uh, uh, district commissioner and the executive director uh, do this jointly. This, this is Eric Hussar. Um, look, I think we all need to make the decision, and it shouldn't be solely the district commissioner with that. Um, I mean, I think we need to discuss this further. Uh, if we could table it, um, it's an important matter, and um, which we could do so, and if it doesn't make, you know, obviously it may not make it till April, but uh, I think we need to do, go, you know, take that course of action with it. Is that, a Mr. Hussar, stream, is that a motion a, to table? That's a motion to table. Until October. This is Commissioner I'm sorry, Allen. I think I heard a second. second All right, so we have a, a motion to table and a second on the motion to table. So I will I will call a a roll call on just the motion to table this to to bring it back up in October. All right? So that's that's what I'm that's what I'm calling the roll for now. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Mr. Charlesworth. Yes. Mr. Gibney. Yes. Mr. Hassar. Yes. Mr. Pastore. Yes. Mr. Small. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. I'll be the lone one out. No. All right, uh, the uh, motion to table passes. So this uh, item will be tabled uh, until uh, uh, the October meeting. And gone uh, well past the top of the hour. So uh, now is uh, the time for our next scheduled five minute break. So on, uh, on my, uh, watch it's 12:20 uh we will turn the microphones off and then turn them back on at 12:25 thank you
It is now 12.25. Can uh, tech support signal they're, they're ready by uh, unmuting the microphones and then muting them again? Thank you. The next item up for consideration is a proposed rulemaking amending our miscellaneous special regulations at Whipple Lake, Huntington County. This is again being presented by Chris Kuhn. Good afternoon, commissioners. And so I'm going to take you through uh, an amendment to section 65.24 proposed rulemaking at Whipple Lake in Huntington County. This is the same approach we have taken to other stock trout water lakes that are coming back online. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, and it's um, like I say, it's uh, it's the standard approach that we've used here for, for other waters around the state. Next slide. So Whipple Lake is a 22 acre impoundment owned by the Conser Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. It's located uh, just south of State College in, in Whipple Dam State Park in Huntington County. In 2019, it was completely dewatered uh, in the fall or late summer to remove uh, sediment and complete structural improvements to the dam. Prior to the drawdown, uh, Whipple Lake offered angling for warm water and cool water fishes, as well as stock trout. Next slide. And so this map illustrates uh, the location of Whipple Dam with the statewide uh, perspective in the inset, the red star indicating approximate location. Next slide. And so dam and spillway repairs are expected to be completed uh, this summer and with refilling initiated soon after. Um, the, the plan is to uh, stock with adult trout for the 2021 stock trout season to provide immediate angling opportunities for trout uh, once refilled and to uh, then initiate uh, stocking in 2021 as well with fingerling plants of select warm and cool water fishes uh, to begin rebuilding the fishery there. And as is done with other waters, um, in a similar situation, our, the desire is to protect the developing warm water and cool water populations from harvest uh, with catch and release regulations during the rebuild, but also allow for uh, angling for stock trout. Next slide. Staff recommend that the commission approve the publication of notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary, which is to add Whipple Lake, Huntington County to miscellaneous special regulations, which would include a provision for um, uh, catch and release uh, for all species except, except trout. Um, Commonwealth inland waters angling regulations would apply to all other species. If adopted on final rulemaking, this amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? Mr. Anderson, I would like to move that we accept the staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Ally. I'll second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, I will call roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioner, the motion passes. Next slide, please. Uh, next item for uh, consideration is another proposed rulemaking, uh, amending our miscellaneous special regulations, this time at Possum Lake in Cumberland County. Presenter again is Chris Kuhn. 
And so um, we just we just went through uh, the addition of a water that is coming back online to the miscellaneous special regulations. This is the end game as to where we 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 want to get to. Um, these regulations, when we put place them on on waters, are meant to be temporary uh, to provide uh, a, a, an opportunity for populations to develop in a no harvesting environment. And we are to the point here with Opossum Lake where we're now looking to uh, remove those special regulations to allow limited harvest and put, move, the, move the regulate regulatory option into one of our existing warm and cool water uh, programs. So uh, Opossum Lake is a 47 acre impoundment owned by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and managed by the Fish and Boat Commission. It's located approximately six miles west, northwest of the borough of Carlisle in Cumberland County, and it was completely dewatered in October of 2008 to complete dam and spillway repairs and modifications um, per DEP dam safety standards. Prior to the drawdown, it offered angling opportunities for warm and cool water fishes, as well as stock trout. Next slide. This graphic, this map, uh, illustrates uh, the, the, the location of Opossum Lake and the, and the surrounding terrain. Again, the state, statewide inset with the star uh, represents the approximate location in Cumberland County. Next slide. So habitat enhancement was completed while the lake was drawn down. That's a typical uh, approach that we try to take as, as, as often as possible. And uh, there, were, there were numerous habitat uh, enhancement structures placed in the, in the dry lake bottom before refill. And uh, following uh, repairs uh, to the dam and the habitat enhancement work, uh, the lake was refilled in spring of 2013. And at that time, uh, the commission resumed annual adult trout stocking uh, to provide immediate angling opportunities um, because there was there was no other uh, fish species or very few fish species in the lake when, when these come back online we like to provide the opportunity to angle uh, for trout while the wa warm cool water uh, fisheries develop and to, to facilitate this 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 water was stocked with fingerling warm water and cool water fishes from 2013 to 2015 and it, it was placed into the miscellaneous special regulations that we previously described in 2012. Next slide. And so during that time period, uh, once, once, once the uh, stocking had occur and, and, and fish population have had a, a little bit of time to develop, uh, staff began to monitor uh, the, the, the 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 development of those populations and the management approach. And so they were um, black bass and panfish populations were evaluated in, uh, from 2015 to 2020 uh, using nighttime boat electrofishing as well as trap nets. And what was what was uh, noted was that sport fish abundance and size structure improved steadily to levels that can now sustain some level of harvest. And so what we're rec recommending here is that we remove the miscellaneous special regulations in favor of management with one of the commission's existing warm water regulation programs. And our intent is if these regulations are removed upon final rulemaking, we would at the same time then uh, recommend that Opossum Lake be designated into the big bass and panfish enhancement programs. So this is a stepwise approach. We've managed this water with catch and release regulations while the, while the fishery developed. We're now going to allow some liberal, limited harvest uh, for the primary fisheries there, the bass and the panfish under uh, some of our, our, our uh, existing programs. All other fish species then would be managed with Commonwealth Inland Waters Angling Regulations. Next slide. And so this graphic illustrates uh, the results of uh, 2020 electrofishing, um, nighttime boat electrofishing for largemouth bass. 
And there were a total of 79 uh, largemouth bass captured during a night of electrofishing there. And you will see that they range from five inches all the way up to 22 inches. What's most notable is that, you know, the stocking had been, had been uh, ceased in 2015. So we have reproduction occurring. You can see that there's good representation of those small fish, multiple age classes, and a good size distribution, also with a, a large number of of fish uh, greater than 15 inches. Next slide. And this is a similar graphic with a, a total catch of, of, of black and white crappie combined. And, and so that is um, a total number of 171 fish captured during the trap net survey. But again, good size representation with some larger fish there. Um, highest numbers noted in that seven to eight inch size range. Next slide. Staff recommended the commission approve the publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary, which is basically to remove a possum lake uh, from the current miscellaneous special regulations. If approved on final rulemaking, the amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. And as I previously described, we would recommend at the same time that Opossum Lake be uh, moved into our big bass and panfish enhancement programs. All other fish species will be managed with Commonwealth inland water angling regulations. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? <clears throat> yes, this is Commissioner Lewis. I move that we accept the staff recommendation on Possum Lake. This is Commissioner Gibney. I second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call roll call vote. Commissioner Ally? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth? Yes. Commissioner Gibney? Yes. Commissioner Hassar? Yes. Commissioner Pastore? Yes. Commissioner Small? Vice President Kaufman? Yes. President Lewis? Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next item for consideration is a proposed rulemaking to our uh, amending our miscellaneous special regulations, this time at Lake Perez, Huntington County. Again, the presenter is Chris Kuhn. And so this is a similar situation to what was just uh, described at Opossum Lake uh, that was approved for publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin for comment. Uh, this is at Lake Perez in Huntington County. It's similar, but a little bit different in, in how the fishery responded uh, during the time period that it was it, it managed with catch and release regulations. Next slide. Lake Perez is a 72-acre impoundment owned by the Pennsylvania State University. It's located uh, just northeast of the village of, of Neffs Mills in, in Huntington County. And it was completely dewatered in June of 2009 to, to uh, complete dam and spillway repairs per modifications uh, uh, per the DEP dam safety standards. Similar timeline a year later than, than what a possum was. Prior to the drawdown, uh, Lake Perez offered angling for warm water and cool water fishes as well as stock trout. Next slide. This map shows uh, the location of Lake Perez uh, with the statewide perspective in the inset. Next slide. And so similar to possum, habitat enhancement was completed while the lake was drawn down following the repairs and, and, and refill uh, to the dam, uh, the, the, the lake refilled in 2014, and the commission resumed ad annual adult trout stockings in 2015 to provide immediate recreational angling opportunities uh, while the fishery was being rebuilt. And to do that, uh, the commission stocked uh, fingerling, 
warm water and cool water fishes from 2014 through 2018. And during that time period, the lake was placed temporarily into the miscellaneous special regulation program to protect the warm water and cool water fish populations uh, in, a, in a no harvest environment. Next slide. And so similar to opossum, there was some monitoring done. Uh, it was done more recently uh, to, to, to uh, survey the black bass and panfish populations during 2019 and 2020. And sport fish abundance and size structure, uh, similar to opossum, has improved steadily uh, during, during, the, during the rebuild phase to levels that can now sustain some level of harvest. And so what we're recommending for Perez is to remove from miscellaneous special regulations in favor of one of the commission's existing warm water regulation programs. If these regulations are removed, we would be recommending Perez for designation into the Pan Fish Enhancement Program. All other species would be managed with Commonwealth in the Waters Angling Regulations. Next slide. And this graphic illustrates the uh, number of fish and size distribution uh, of, of, of black bass, largemouth bass that were captured during nighttime boat electrofishing surveys conducted this spring. And there were a, a total of 162 bass captured, um, more so than, than, than in a possum, uh, even though there was similar effort there. Uh, there was uh, not as many size classes uh, or, or age classes represented in this length frequency distribution, you see a large number of fish in that 10 to 11 inch range. And, and because of the high abundance of, of smaller fish that developed under a catch and release environment, it's not advisable to place this uh, water into our big bass program. We also have some additional um, criteria for big bass uh, that's catch per unit effort criteria that's not presented here, uh, but we look at different, the, the total number of cat bass caught, which is well in excess of our criteria, but uh, the number of, of, of fish greater than 15 inches and, and, and greater than 12 inches aren't quite there yet. So um, next slide, please. This graphic illustrates the uh, total number and size distribution of, of sunfish, bluegill and pumpkin seed, as well as crappies, the black and white combined. Um, so there was a total number of 111 sunfish and, and, and 95 crappies caught during the trap net surveys. And uh, good, good uh, representation of, of larger fish that developed under the no harvest environment. So this is a scenario where we feel would be appropriate to um, allow for limited harvest of, of the uh, uh, panfish populations here in our panfish enhancement program. Next slide. Staff recommend that the commission approve the publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in the commentary which is to remove Lake Perez and Huntington County from miscellaneous special regulations. If, if, if approved on final rulemaking, the amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin, and Lake Perez will be recommended for designation into the Pan Fish Enhancement Program. All other fish species will be managed with Commonwealth and Waters Angling Regulations. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Anderson. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Ally. I second that motion. Hearing a motion in a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call roll call vote. Commissioner Ally? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth? Yes. Commissioner Gibney? Yes. Commissioner Assar? Yes. Mr. Pastore? Yes. Mr. Small? Vice President Kaufman? Yes. President Lewis? Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. 
Next slide. Uh, the next item for consideration is a designation of proposed changes to the list of Class A wild trout streams. Again, Chris Kuhn presenting. And so, commissioners, you will recall, like, similar to the April virtual meeting that we had, I'm going to provide a very cursory overview of the typical presentation that you received uh, for in-person meetings regarding the Class A's as well as wild trout. We have five uh, streams that are proposed for addition to the Class A wild trout streams list. These were provided to you uh, uh, prior to the meeting, uh, the supporting data as well as location maps for that. That information is also available for the public on our website. And a notice of proposed designation was published at 58 PA 2611 on May 16, 2020, that's Exhibit D. The Commission received a total of 327 public comments, 20, 326 support the proposed designation, and one comment did not pertain to the proposed designation. Next slide. Staff recommend that the Commission add five stream sections to its Class A wild trout streams list as described in the commentary. If approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Commissioner, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I move to accept the staff recommendation. Commissioner Charlesworth, I second that motion. Hearing a motion in a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call roll call vote. Commissioner Ally? Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth? Yes. Commissioner Gibney? Yes. Commissioner Assar? Yes. Commissioner Pastore? Yes. Commissioner Small? Vice President Kaufman? Yes. President Lewis? Yes. Uh, President Lewis? President Lewis, your microphone was muted. We didn't hear your vote. I heard him vote yes. This is Commissioner Gibney. Thank you. Motion passes. Next slide, please. Next item for consideration is a designation for classification of wild trout streams. Chris Kuhn again presenting. And so similar to the Class A, uh, additions to the Class A list, the, 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 we have 73 uh, proposed additions to the wild trout list. Um, the information regarding the, the qualifying data and the location maps were provided to you prior to the commission meeting and are also available uh, for the general public on our website. And notice the proposed designations was published on May 16th, 2020, that's Exhibit E. And the commission received a total of 325 public comments, 324 supported the proposed designations, and one did not pertain to the proposed designations. Next slide. Staff recommend that the commission add 73 new waters to the commission's list of wild trout streams as set forth in the notice of proposed designations. If approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Ministers, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have any discussion? Excuse me, do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I'll make the motion. Please step. 
Commissioner Charlesworth, I'll second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call roll call vote. Commissioner Ally? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Mr. Charlesworth? Yes. Mr. Gibney? Yes. Mr. Hassar? Yes. Mr. Pastore? Yes. Mr. Small? Yes. Vice President Kaufman? Yes. President Lewis? Yes. The motion passes. Next slide, please. Commissioners, we have come to the portion of the agenda for other new business. Does any commissioner have new business to bring before the board? Yes, this is Commissioner Gibney. Um, throughout the spring and into the summer, uh, we regularly heard about uh, the efforts of our Fish Commission, Fish and Boat Commission staff that went above and beyond uh, what they were expected to do as far as getting this trout into the streams and you know limited amount of time and i think i'd like to offer this resolution as a recognition of their efforts and uh, an act of appreciation for those efforts and i think this fits well with our strategic plan uh regarding uh one of the items i think item number 36 uh regarding uh, staff morale and uh, camaraderie the resolution is this i'm this 20th day of July, by the Fish, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission Board of Commissioners, commending Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission employees for their work during the COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission currently consists of 363 employees working throughout the Pennsylvania, throughout Pennsylvania in the support of the agency's mission to protect, conserve, and enhance the Commonwealth's aquatic resources and provide fishing and boating opportunities. And whereas these valued employees serve in diverse, but equally important roles within the organization, accompanying administration, field operations, and law enforcement. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has severely disrupted the lives of all Pennsylvanians, both personally and professionally, including the day-to-day -day operations of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission and all Commonwealth agencies, and whereas, amid, it, amid the onset of the pandemic, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat and Commission employees promptly rose to the occasion, displaying perseverance, teamwork, and an unwavering commitment to the agency's mission, despite many challenges in a constantly evolving landscape. And whereas, employees from across the agency assisted in mission-critical tasks outside of their normal duties, such as stocking trout throughout the Commonwealth, and continue to work tirelessly on behalf of the of Pennsylvania's anglers, boaters, and aquatic resources. And whereas these efforts safeguard our aquatic resources and have provided Pennsylvanians with safe, enjoyable outdoor recreation opportunities that greatly benefit mental and physical health during a time of considerable stress and uncertainty. And now, therefore, in furtherance of the commission's mis mission, be it resolved, that the Board of Commissioners commends all Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission employees for the support and dedication to the agency's mission, despite the innumerable challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, and resolve that the Board of Commission appreciates and is grateful for the hard work and sacrifices our employees continue to make on behalf of our aquatic resources and providing all Pennsylvanians with safe and enjoyable outdoor recreation opportunities during this uncertain time and resolved that the Board of Commissioners and Executive Director recognize that the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's employees are the organization's greatest asset and will continue to be relied upon for the duration of the pandemic and beyond. This is Commissioner Ally. I would second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the resolution, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? The motion adopting the resolution passes. Thank you, commissioners. Is there any other new business to be brought for the board? Hearing none. Uh, commissioners, I now formally announce that your next quarterly meeting will take place on October 19th and 20th in Harrisburg, unless uh, circumstances would require another virtual meeting. Uh, commissioners, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Uh, this is Commissioner Gibney. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Oh, All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you for your attendance. This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>